Starfield is like a Bethesda's greatest hits album. It's the most modern version of all the Bethesda games, having similar mechanics to all of their previous titles, but delivering them in a way that feels fresh and new. The gamer in me can easily recommend because obviously this game being on Game Pass means you can play it for a very, very small price. And for all of their faults, I actually enjoy Bethesda games. I think that the game loop is fun and addicting because you basically just go out and grind things and have numbers increase and your stats go burr. A lot of the main quests were actually quite entertaining with really solid writing and voice acting. Side quests obviously being a lot lower in quality and scope, but overall I would say that this game is serviceable. But the critic in me feels differently. The critic in me thinks that this game is hot garbage. It doesn't do anything new, it's just another Bethesda game. It has the worst introduction that a Bethesda game has ever had. There's a complete lack of direction. And let's be real, the only new gameplay aspect of this versus Fallout or Skyrim is the fact that we've got spaceships. As far as planetary exploration is concerned, you're not flying planet to planet like in No Man's Sky. You're just fast traveling from planet to planet. So think about the expansive map of Skyrim or Fallout where you try to go from point A to point B and there's all these different dungeons and stuff that you might come across along the way. Starfield basically makes it so that you can instantly fast travel from A to B with your spaceship and all of those interesting dungeons and stuff may or may not be on the planet that you're fast traveling to in the first place. While I definitely appreciated the ability to freely explore the galaxy, a lot of the planets were empty or had like one or two copy and paste dungeons, you know, as you would expect with a Bethesda game. I will say that the main faction planets did feel fleshed out. Neon was one of my favorites. This place is clearly inspired by the cyberpunk video game. The factions themselves were really fleshed out and I did enjoy the fact that the quests seemed to give me a lot of different options of how I would approach them. Usually those options would just involve me killing everyone in the quest line, but I still appreciated the fact that I could be evil. Usually in Bethesda games, you kind of just have to follow the narrative trail that the Bethesda sets out for you. In Starfield, it felt like I had a little bit of more choice in the matter, usually getting to respond to different conversation trees based on either my skill points or the faction that I was a part of. Sometimes this would make it so that if I had to pay credits, I would pay a lot less, or I would just be able to skip a whole quest step entirely. The main quest was kind of cool, and I will admit that even though I didn't fully enjoy the delivery of the main storyline, I did find it to be really interesting. I won't spoil anything, but I always appreciate when a video game will throw you into New Game Plus and have a narrative reason for it, rather than just doing it through some menus. But I feel a little bit torn because while this is a really cool narrative storyline for a Bethesda game, video games as a whole have been I don't know, running laps around this for years. Armored Core 6 also had a narrative reason you would get into New Game Plus, but it had so much more impact because of the dark undertones. Whereas Bethesda's storyline kind of felt campy. Still credit where credit is due. I appreciate the fact that Bethesda went the extra mile of having a bunch of random scenarios that could happen when you went into New Game Plus that would change the main quest narrative slightly. But aside from the overarching tone of the main quest, being interesting, the gameplay of the main quest was terrible. You're just fast traveling from planet to planet collecting a bunch of stupid things from a whole bunch of copy and paste dungeons or dungeons that just don't have any interest or more particularly the end game dungeons which had far too many enemies in them. It just took like three hours to complete the final dungeon in the game and not because it was difficult just because there was so much copy and pasted enemies. But let's wrap this up. As far as an arbitrary score is concerned, I'm gonna give Starfield a two out of five. I know that might seem particularly low, especially because of the high praises that I sung for this game early on in the review. And even despite this score, as I said previously, I can still easily recommend this game because of the low buy-in cost of it being on Game Pass. And if you enjoy Bethesda games, you will enjoy Starfield the same as I did. The thing is, a lot of the game mechanics in Starfield feel dated. This feels like a game that should have been made 15 years ago or even 25 years ago, then it would have been insane. But the quality of video games as a whole has
has just been going up and up and up and up and up, with Zelda Breath of the Wild being the primary example that most gamers will use to say what an open world RPG exploration game should be. So many different companies have had their Breath of the Wild moment more recently, and Bethesda is really trailing behind. My hope is that the next Elder Scrolls game is where they've been saving all of their great ideas because I haven't seen any of them present in Starfield. But before we wrap up this review, there is something that we do need to address, namely mods. Mods changed my score from a 2 out of 5 to a 3 out of 5 for Starfield. As with any Bethesda game, the modders come in to save the day and fix mandatory issues that Bethesda was too lazy to do themselves. With the primary difference between the modders and a Bethesda employee being that one of them is doing it out of passion, the other one is doing it for a paycheck. Thankfully, they have confirmed that mods will be coming to Starfield for console players. But I still believe that the best part of Starfield being out is Bethesda can stop talking about it and start working on the next Elder Scrolls. 